Well, most don't appreciate that the skin is probably one of the most complex organs in the body because it's really a convergence of all the body systems, sensory, vascular, endocrine, uh, immune system, everything's represented there. And all these components all interact with each other because it's a multi-purpose organ. You know, it provides a protective barrier, but it's one of the largest, most exquisite sense organs. It's involved in thermoregulation. Okay, it's involved in production of vitamin D. So it plays so many different roles, but they all have to be compatible with each other. And they interplay with each other and the innervation coordinates a large part of that. So it, it really provides a window into the body when you're looking for something that may have gone wrong in a diseased state. And consequently, <clears throat> even when you're looking at therapeutics, the, the durability, the, the um, ability to repair itself is offset by the fact that it is incredibly beaten up day in and day out all right and at the same time um, uh, it, it, it manages to keep functioning and um, <clears throat> in that context it's also vulnerable to side effects of medications too so it's it's susceptible to rashes as a common side effect it's it's uh, so it really brings a lot of topics all together in one, in one structure, in one organ. Pain is a sensory phenomenon. Skin is the largest sensory organ. It's important. That's basically the bottom line. And as Dr. Rice points out, there's a lot of interaction going on between systems. We are able to use our endpoints and the technologies we've developed at our company to use skin as a marker for chronic pain and acute pain in some cases. Well, skin is largely composed of several layers, but the outermost layer is the epidermis, and it's 90% keratinocytes. And the research we've been a, a large part of in the last 15 years has, has really uncovered the fact that keratinocytes are, are modulators of the small fibers, of the, of the endings, the neural component that actually mediates pain. Uh, ourselves and many other groups have now shown that keratinocytes, those cells right in the epidermis, signal directly to those fibers. Um, and the research is really showing that your skin is the, f is the first play in the, in the sensory system and it's these keratinocytes that really are, are the transducers of the sensory stimuli. Well, coming off of, of what Dr. Albrecht just said, um, the neural properties of the keratinocytes um, are quite complex and they span algesic and, al and analgesic mechanisms. So several years ago, we were privileged to be part of a, a study that discovered the skin actually had, the keratinocytes actually contain and release beta endorphin, an endogenous opiate, okay? And <clears throat> we've also discovered that the keratinocytes express voltage-gated sodium channels, which everybody always associate, associate it with neuronal excitation, with a question, well, why would they be on a cell that presumably was non-excitable? And we showed they release, it's involved in release of, of uh, ATP, which can activate nerve fibers. We've made several other discoveries. Each one of these molecules that we keep finding out there is a known target of interest in the pharmaceutical industry as a particular mechanism involved in pain, but it haven't been viewed in the context that there is a skin contributor to this. And so there are several products out there that, that act topically. A lidocaine patch is one, a capsaicin patch is another. But the party thinking has always been that it's the action is on the nerve fibers. And now we're showing that probably another target of these therapeutics is the keratinocytes. And so what we're learning about the keratinocyte chemistry, if it's properly leveraged, may find a better way to actually administer a therapeutic approach 
okay, to a variety of complex pain problems, and uh, which would be a, a, a multimodal type strategy because these cells have a number of neural signaling uh, components to them. So if you, you hit the right combination, it might be far more effective than the typical way we've tried to use topicals in the past. Well, some of the elements for multimodal, some of the concepts of multimodal gets to what Dr. Rice was suggesting, is that we've now identified several uh, systems at play in skin, and keratinocytes in particular, and signaling to small fibers. Um, and the use of combinatorial or multimodal therapy can, can affect change across multiple mechanisms. So we could affect a, an ATP mechanism, we could affect a sodium channel mechanism, uh, we could affect a, a peptide mechanism, uh, and, and any one of those may have some benefit in, in, in and of itself, but if we attack two of them or even three at the same time, you may get a compounded effect of benefit, and you may be able to do that with, with reduced dosing and some of the other medications. Um, in particular, obviously, with REMS and the problems with opioid o overdose, some of the topicals become uh, maybe more attractive to use with patients who have opioid issues. Uh, and that's sort of one of the things that we're trying to steer ourselves toward is the use of compounded topical therapies or multimodal uh, pharmacologic treatments uh, to help people in pain, as well as, I would say, the multimodal therapies that also venture off of pharmacotherapy in general, but other um, therapies, whether, whether it's mindfulness or yoga practice or anything that we can do to help the pain patients, you know, the old adage of if it helps and doesn't hurt, then go ahead and do it. And we really kind of promote that in our work too. And your topicals by nature are um, less prone to problems than systemic medications. So <clears throat> if indeed you can find a solution based off of a topical approach and avoid systemic complications, that would be very important. Um, another part of the presentation today dealt with convergent sensory and sympathetic inputs to the microvasculature of the skin, which are key to thermal regulation as well as uh, managing metabolites and shunting blood supply to other tissues like skeletal muscle. So what we've done or we've been doing is we've identified two very novel targets, the keratinocytes and the vascular innervation that have not been on the radar screen in the past as potential mechanisms of chronic pain and potential therapeutic targets. So that's something brand new to the field. I uh, agree, second Dr. <laughs> Rice's points. Uh, you know, we, we've been out in the skin now for a while and, and promote peripheral uh, changes. I, I left the talk today and the one thing that, that we can confidently tell everybody in the crowd is that when you see a chronic pain patient, in every patient that we've looked at to date, there's peripheral alterations. We have not found a patient who's in chronic pain biopsied them in the skin and looked and found everything to be normal. So we recognize that central sensitization and some of the central compounds that, that act there have their efficacy there, but they're not, it's not a vacuum and there's a lot going on in the periphery. Uh, our group and many others are starting to uncover that. We even, you know, see some of the central people kind of come into the dark side and they're making their way out <laughs> into the periphery to recognize that there's a lot going on in the periphery too. Um, and so we just want to be there to promote, you know, yay periphery. And it's not that we don't, we don't discount the central, we know there's stuff going on there for sure, but if you just palliatively treat the central nervous system and you don't go after what may be the, the root cause or the underlying pathology in the periphery, you're kind of just chasing your tail around. So. And, and looking out at the skin, for example, we came across a real organic problem associated with fibromyalgia which has always been viewed as a central nervous system disorder. But here is a physical change that you can quantify involving the vascular innervation. And, and to find something organic is huge to that group of patients because it, it puts it in a different realm than being a, a psychosomatic disorder. For sure. And as far as clinical 
you know, implications go, I, I would only suggest that topical therapies, the idea of compounding topical therapies, um, really should be investigated by clinicians and, and don't discount the idea that you can use skin and, and manipulate skin as a, as a window into the nervous system. Uh, and I, I think that's really where we want to kind of move the science forward, safer and still efficacious.